Good morning. I knew that I, forget, I will forget the clicker. It was placed here for me. Almost feels like my wedding. I have my song coming in. People, the rabbi announced me. <laughs> I have my guest here. I'm terrified. Feels like it never happened before. The only thing that I don't have is the bride next to me, but I have all of your contact details, so <laughs> stay tuned. Guys, we are back together. Welcome to Swamp Up. I cannot tell you how excited we are, and I'm speaking on behalf of all frogs, to see this happening again. Something like a bit more than two years ago, someone pulled out the plug and, and sent us home, and some of you are here back with us. Some are new faces at Swamp Up. We are very excited. We, were, we insisted to have it in person at a level of zero virtual experience. And this is not that popular today, but this is who we are. And yesterday at the reception, it was amazing to hear your feedback about it, of how important it is for you to keep Swamp Up that intimate, to keep Swamp Up personal, to see people you see you like from the community back in person, not in a 2,000, 3,000 people group, but almost as a family reunion. So we decided that instead of doing one big swamp up, we will take it to a city tour and stay tuned. Some of you will join us in, uh, in the other venues, but we are going to take this bus from, uh, from the entrance and, and travel in five different locations and make sure that the frogs are leaping everywhere in the world. So thank you so much for joining us here for the next two days. We have an amazing agenda for you. And we also have great partners that worked with us to make it not only a super efficient DevOps and DevSecOps conference, but also something to remember, something that, will, that you will be able to take with you, not just uh, the announcement coming from, from the community or from the vendor, but best practices. Our speakers are here to speak about the things that you face on a day-to-day -day basis. So what is it that, that we see three years from the last Swamp Up? Raise your hand if this is not your first Swamp Up. Wow, the majority the majority is new, that, that's great. Do we have anyone here that uh, joined us in Swamp Up 2015, the first Swamp Up? Oh, I'm coming to give you a hug. <laughs> Our friends from CloudBiz. Thank you. And of course, our own Tracy Quinn. Tracy, you're part of the team, so I'm not counting you as a guest. Family. So, uh, what, is it, what is it that we see three years after Swamp Up San Francisco? It was amazing. We spoke about a lot of things. A year before that, in 2018, we said all kinds of statements that sound back then like, really, I'm, I'm more a CEO of a t-shirt company. And now we see that it's a reality. What we see today, what we see today is that the world introduces us to new realities. Every few days, every few months, every few months, every few years, boom, new reality. Just not long ago, we spoke about the pandemic, and we spoke about working from home, and what it means, and how DevOps support that, and how digital transformation is vital for this change. We are speaking with the market today, and everybody is speaking about the recession that is already here. Whether we accept it or not, whether we know it or not, the recession is knocking on our door. And guess what? Everyone is speaking about software and how software can support that and how DevOps and DevSecOps become mission critical in times like that. You guys are sitting in a room of people that are not just great technologists, but also secure their place 
by doing something that is vital, that is mission critical for your organization. And take whatever example you want to take, whether it's the recession or the pandemic or moving to the cloud or the adoption of Kubernetes. DevOps and DevSecOps became mission critical to the organization. You're in a very good place together with us and other companies in the food chain. The second thing that we hear from the market is that infrastructure is not something that you replace every, every few years. Sorry, every few months. You replace it every few years if you are really agile. Otherwise, once a decade. Again, very solid, fundamental thing for the organization. Nobody just moved to the cloud and come, come back to a self hosted and then to another cloud, and then maybe I will use Kubernetes or I will use a different technology. You guys are facing strategic decision in your organization. I will not do a survey here, but just listening to some of you last night telling us that the CEO office is calling you to discuss some strategic move that you are facing now, do you understand what it means to be part of the big picture? The third thing is obviously what we expect to see. Now, without mentioning names, or big blue names, or other names, we know that we set the stage for an end-to-end -end solution in the world of DevOps and DevSecOps. How do we know that? Because the point solutions are not good enough anymore. We are expecting to have a holistic solution that not just integrate with what we have, but play smoothly a full process. However, we do, not, we do not want to have a very long train that takes you from point A to point Z, and it gets there, but it's heavy, and it's long, and the process takes hours or days. And when you need to respond super fast about the vulnerability you found or a release that you have to do, Long trains are not the cool game anymore. You have to be agile. You have to be fast. You need a train, not just a vehicle, not just a bicycle. You need a train, but you need the, the, the short, the fast train. And the last thing is the muscle that you develop. You know, JFrog, for the longest time, was the engine behind behind what we call DevOps. When we came up with binaries as a concept, it was almost at the level of, uh, of a joke, like who's managing binaries? And then who's managing security on a binary level and dis distribution on a binary level? And, but what we know is that these muscles that we develop together with you listening to the community wisdom, helped us build a better company and a better community. And this is what I recommend for you guys today. Please be open-minded to whatever you hear in the, in the different sessions, because part of what you are doing here is coming to the DevOps gym and the DevSecOps gym and develop new muscles that you don't have now. And these muscles will serve you three years from now, going back to the first point of what the world will introduce you to. So speaking of evolution, you all walk this uh, Darwin different stages. And I guess that nobody is surprised all the way to here. But what I want to speak about in the next few minutes, this is going to be a very short review of uh, Swamp Up before, Swamp Up after. I want to review with you what was predicted and happened, and some of you are still processing, practicing, and learning, and what is yet to become. And maybe to suggest humbly to do what we do in JFOG, listen to the community wisdom. And I saw so many faces, so many faces that I learned me and the team learned so much from. I saw John here, and I saw Andre and Steve, and people that told us 
what is their pain, and together with us, developed the next stage of DevOps and what they face. So, I don't know if you remember, but when we started the Swamp Up in 2015, it was more about a community of Java developer, maybe .NET, C Sharp. We spoke with Ruby guys. We spoke with, in the Java community, Maven versus Gradle. It was all kind of different camps. Very fast, we moved to a full stack, multi-programming language. Nobody here, nobody, I hope, nobody here will raise a hand and say, I'm introducing myself as a .NET developer. The evolution worked already. Second thing, Swamp Up 2019. We are on stage. Guys, not too long ago, three years ago. We are on stage. At the end of the conference, we ran a survey with you. Only 30% of the audience in San Francisco told us that they are already trying Kubernetes in production. Only 30%. Now, JFrog have almost 7,000 customers. The majority of the Fortune 100 is powered by JFrog. Only 30% of this community said, we are using Kubernetes. Look at us today. It's not a question. It's a stand-up. And if you are not yet there, you will be there. The next step in the evolution was the multi-cloud. Now listen, I raised money in 2018, our Series D. We raised the, the, the highest uh, round we, we, we had before the IPO. And when we pitched the JFrog story, we thought that it's funny. We said that uh, JFrog is amphibian. We, we meant hybrid, but nobody got the joke. <laughs> you too. So. Um, and we said, it's going to be a multi-cloud world. And in 90% of the cases, what we've heard is, oh, you, you missed something. On-prem on is dead. <laughs> is there someone here feel comfortable to raise your hand embarrassedly and say this today? Because if you think that on-prem is dead, you are not even listening to what the clouds are saying. AWS developed a mechanism to have a hybrid environment together with JFrog. Same Google and Microsoft Azure. We are working with AliCloud now to do the same. By regulation, all companies, enterprise companies, especially the highly regulated industry, have an agenda of setting up a multi-cloud topology. It's not a question anymore. And even that, you guys deep inside, when, when, when you check inside your core, you are engineers. So there is one thing that I know that you are allergic to, and this is a vendor lock-in. Nobody wants to be in a, just one, one cloud shop. And you know it, and the clouds know it, and they are great partners of us. And we work together with them to align the solution with what the market expects. Then come today. You know, when, when we speak about security, it almost sounds it was there forever. Please raise your hand if you have some kind of a security tool that protects your software supply chain or your DevOps, DevSecOps. Raise your hand. Thank you. Almost everyone. Those of you who don't, please speak with us at the booth. <laughs> raise your hand if you have two tools that protect the same thing. Same hands. I'll dare you. Raise your hand if you have three tools. <laughs> and you know why? Because we used to be, we, we almost took pride of being quick and dirty. We are quick. Release. Release. And there is someone there, <laughs> someone there with the hand on the switch that is waiting for you, right? But guess what? Two things have been changed. A, this someone cannot race with you anymore. 
you are faster. You already did the first, second, third step into DevOps. You are so fast, with multiple releases a day, they cannot catch up with you. So what happened? And this is what we hear, what we hear from, from you, from the market. What happened is that the security stakeholders are coming to the CIO and to the VP of R&D, to the CTO, and say, hey, we have this threat. We need you to protect that. So that's fine, but if you have a thousand people speaking Hebrew with you, but you insist not to learn Hebrew, then you will be isolated. So we start to see you guys becoming a security expert. And you know what happened next? You also became the target. Malicious software packages are coming after you. The moment you took this step into the responsibility chain, you wear a new t-shirt with a target on your back, and now the developers are the target for the hackers. So the combination of the organization expect you to protect the software supply chain with the fact that the hacker is after you gives you zero chances to stay out of this game. Remember that I told you that you joined us for two days conference and it feels like a technology conference? It's a gym. And you are practicing your DevSecOps uh, uh, um, abilities and build your muscles around that. There is no way, even if today you are not part of this routine or part of this chain or part of this process, there is no way to stay out of it. And when we speak with the market and people are asking us, so well, what's different? You just raise your hand. You have five tools that protect the same thing. I'm protecting my containers with Aqua and TwistLock and whatever. I'm protecting my Git repository. I'm scanning it with uh, Black Duck and Sneak and, and White Sauce. I'm doing this, I'm doing that. And you will hear today in our keynote what's the main difference. But remember that I spoke about the, the fast train and not just the long train? You need a holistic solution that when a log4j happens, it's not just someone calling you and say, hey, you have someone in your house, looks like it's not someone from the family, you might want to be aware of that. No, you need to remediate and you need to do it fast and you need to protect your organization and you also know that they came in from the back door, from, from the binary level. And if you want to protect your software supply chain, there is no other way to do it but going all the way down to the binaries. You want to stay at the source code level? Fine, good luck, be my guest. You will hear about the PyPy uh, vulnerabilities and the NPM vulnerabilities and the Log4j and the Spring Shell and our JFrog research team can tell you about it every day. Every day there is a new someone that managed to get in through your software packages. Okay, enough about security, I'm getting too excited about it. You will hear from Yoav and Nati and our team more about what we have for you. But I'm also here to speak with you about 2024. Okay, because this is, this is where you start doing the steps toward this direction. We thought that just by being full stuck, we made a change. And then we took us another leap forward and we said, okay, full stack, Mr. CIO, CTO, I'm a full stack. Oh, you want me to do continuous deployment as well? Okay, releases, check. Then we took another step. Oh, you want me to move the organization to the cloud? Thousands of developers are counting my service and now I have to keep this availability almost as a cloud provider inside my organization? Yes, okay, I'll do that. And then another step. And then, oh, I now responsible not just for the availability and the releases, but also for the security? Okay, <laughs> I'll do that. I'm, I'm one person. 
I wouldn't ask here, but so many of you here are super DevOps that supports thousands of developers, thousands of developers in a very lean organization. Someone here, a very good friend of mine, supports thousands of developers with a team of two. This is how efficient you become. So a moment before you get starving and not being lean, you are now asked to think about 2024, 2025. And this is a fact, guys. We can ignore that, but it's a fact. And there is another fact. Your binaries will be deployed on these devices. Now, make a choice. Do you, do you want to be part of the game? Do you think that you can stay out of the game? You take care of these binaries from creation, from bringing it from, from the public hubs, from creation to distribution, to security, and now deployment to the device comes. If you really think that you can stay out of the DevOps of things world, and it doesn't mean that you have to be an IoT company. It just this is where it goes. And this is why it became super easy for JFrog to explain to technologists why binaries are the primary asset. And this is what I suggest humbly as the next step that we will see in the world of DevOps. What we will hear about here is very much aligned with what I shared, and we'll start with the keynote. Um, the community, this is a very unique gathering because you don't have to get into the JFrog talks. You can walk into another room and listen, someone, listen to someone just like you that face the same challenge in his company or her company. And there will be discussions around security and around DevOps and continuous deployment and Kubernetes and debugging and so many things that you face on a daily basis. But we will also share with you our excitement of what we baked, what we have in the stove ready for you to use because we have learned one thing. And look at us, guys. So many years, JFrog is still talking about three years from now. And why is that? Because we are very good listeners. So I would appreciate your feedback. Whatever the feedback is, slap us in the, on the face or give us a hug. But talk with us because this is how we build, this is how we build JFrog. This is how we build the community and this is how we build our tools. The cutting edge that we are talking about here today, and some of it will be demonstrated. We are also a different company. Usually you come on stage and you wave with your hand and you say that you are going to fly to the moon. There is only one thing. I didn't build a spaceship, but I will fly to the moon. Thank you very much. This is not JFrog. What you will see today is already available or at the stage of testing it a moment before it goes to production in your hands. And, and I'm really welcoming you to be part of what we call the DevOps destiny.